Guilford County students. I'm Jo Watson Hackle, and I'm the author of Smack Dab in the Middle of Maybe, which is on the North Carolina Battle of the Books list. And I hope that you will check it out. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to Greensboro Bound and to the Guilford County Public Schools for making this whole virtual visit possible. So during this visit, I'd like to give you a sneak peek behind the scenes look at the process of uh, creating the book. I'm going to share with you some photos of some of the things in the books in the book and some resources uh, that you can uh, get for free online. Um, and I also have gotten your excellent, excellent questions and I cannot wait to answer every single one. So let's get started. Our first set of questions is from Elias C from Oak Hill Elementary, Vivian uh, from Jones Elementary, Luke N from Alamance Elementary, Bailey P from Southern Elementary, and Julie S from Oak Hill Elementary. And they all wanted to know the same thing. What was your inspiration for Smack Dab in the Middle of Maybe? And why did you write this book? Well, I wrote the book because I love writing and I really wanted to bring you the reader into the world of the characters. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about why that world is so special to me. But first, where did the idea for this story come from? Well, my two favorite books growing up were My Side of the Mountain and From the Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basily Frank Waller. And I love how My Side of the Mountain takes readers on an adventure where surviving out in the wild is a quest in and of itself. And I also love to solve a good clue trail. Um, as uh, if you've read from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil Lee Frank Waller, you know that book does a wonderful job of taking you, the reader, alongside the main characters as they try and solve a clue trail. So I wanted to combine my two favorite things, outdoor adventure and an art mystery clue trail and put them together in one book for you. And when I was creating that book, I knew exactly where to set it because it turns out that I grew up in a real life ghost town. Um, Electric Mills was once a home to a huge forest with huge trees. The trees were so big, some of them, that if I stretched out my arms as far as they would go, and if you stretched out your arms as far as they would go, and we stood on opposite sides of the tree, our fingers wouldn't even touch. That's how big the trees were. And a company came in and built an entire town around this giant forest. And they spent 30 years cutting down the trees. They built a beautiful homes. They built a big factory. They brought in stores. They brought in a general store. They brought in a library. They brought in a theater. And they built sidewalks to connect them all. But when all the lumber was gone, they picked up the factory, they picked up the houses, they picked up the theater, they even picked up the library and they moved them somewhere else. So when I lived in the town, my parents moved there uh, when I was 11, um, there was really nothing left except for these sidewalks that wove through this half wild and history haunted place. And I wanted to write about it for y'all. So here's some pictures of the original ghost town. So here's a picture of the Electric Mills historical sign. And here is a picture of the original mill town. You can see what, how huge it was at one time. And I'd like you to see next a picture of part of the factory. And now we have the huge theater that was once the show place of the town. And then here are some pictures of some of the houses where the people in the town lived. And finally, the town had its own currency called a Dougaloo. And I have one of the last remaining Dougaloos that I brought to show you. Garon C. from Monticello Brown Summit, Marcus from Southwest Elementary, Kelly M. from Oak Hill Elementary, Julian T. from Simpkins Elementary, Ella Grace from Southwest Elementary, Elias C. from Oak Hill Elementary, Bailey P. from uh, Southern Elementary, Ariana R. from Southern Elementary, 
Jocelyn R. of Southern Elementary, and Dalen from Blueford Peeler Elementary all wanted to know what inspired me to write the book and become an author. And so why did I become an author? And the answer is because it is so much fun. I hope that I have some writers uh, in the audience today. I love to share writing tips and I'm going to share a few writing tips uh, today. Um, and writing is great because you get to use your imagination and create a world of your own and then invite your readers into that world. And so you're putting your thoughts and your ideas in, so out there into the world for other people to enjoy. And it's really fun to play around with clues and ideas and um, come up with a clue trail because you can take every odd, weird, and interesting fact. And if you can make it work, you can put it in your clue trail. So I'm always on the lookout for any odd, weird, and interesting facts. And if you have any for me to um, consider for the, my next writing project, just send them my way and you can find my contact information on my website. So Julian T. and Bryson, both from Simpkins Elementary, Barbara M. of Southern Elementary, and Cooper W. of Northern Elementary all want to know how I came up with the idea for Smack Dab in the middle of maybe. So you know that I wanted to combine outdoor adventure and an art mystery clue trail, but I needed a character. And I also needed a reason for the character to go on this clue trail. So I, I did what all writers do, and I hope that you do if you get stuck, no matter what you get stuck on, and that's brainstorm. So I uh, took a pencil uh, or a pen and I wrote down tons and tons and tons, actually hundreds of ideas for characters' names and traits and reasons that they would um, go out uh, in, uh, into this abandoned ghost town. And I created a character, Cricket. And Cricket's mom saw this magical room when she was a little girl. And it was so magical and so unbelievable that in fact, people didn't believe that it existed. And so Cricket's mom has been off looking for this room all these years. And Cricket believes that finding the room and proving that it's real is the key to getting Cricket's mom to come back and to stay home for good. And so that created the motivation for the character to go out and try and solve a clue trail to find the secret room. So, um, and, um, and I did a lot, a lot of drafts of the story until I got it just right, where I thought that, um, that readers just like you would enjoy it. So, um, Canon S from Simpkins Elementary um, asked how I thought of the storyline. So, um, I told you I had the main character and, um, and I had this setting and I had a general plot. And then I did um, what all writers should do and that's I gave myself permission to write a really, really bad first draft. So, I am talking about a first draft that is so bad that if somebody had seen it when I was writing it, I would have probably fallen over out of embarrassment because it had spelling errors and it had typos and it had all kinds of things wrong with it. But why do you think I had to write that really bad first draft? Because I needed to give myself permission to get the words out on the paper because once you have the words out on the paper, then you can edit. And if you'd like, I can send your teachers this editing tool. This is what I use when I'm revising. And so I take what I've done and I go line by line by line. And I look for ways to make my work better. And I also did outlines of every single chapter. And I've made note of what, um, the, where the setting was, what was happening in the chapter, whether the mood was happy or sad, and um, any clue elements that I introduced. And I try to make sure that it was always fast paced and always to give you, the reader, a reason to turn the page and to read that next chapter. So our next question is from Scott C. from Southwest Elementary and John H. from Grade 5 from Jones Elementary. And they wanted to know where I got the inspiration for the bird room. Well, it turns out that there is a real life secret room that Mississippi artist Walter Inglis Anderson left when he died. It is, um, Walter Inglis Anderson was a very mysterious and a very reclusive artist who kept mostly to himself. And he lived on, this, uh, on the Mississippi coast and he used to row seven miles over the open gulf to a tiny little island called Horn Island. And when he got there, he would paint and draw and paint 
and draw for weeks on end. And when he got back to his little cottage where he lived all by himself, he would paint and draw and paint and draw. And when he passed away, his relatives went to his house and everything looked pretty normal, except for one room. In that room, they got their courage up, they stepped inside, they opened the door, and what they saw took their breath away because he painted the ceiling, the floors, and the walls to bring the viewer into his world, the world of the Mississippi Gulf Coast. So as the first ray of light shone in from the east, it would land on the wall on a painting of a rooster who was crowing to start the day. And the light would continue to move around the room as the sun moved across the sky, and it would show you things that he wanted you to see at the exact moment that he wanted you to see it. So light lands on a picture of a squirrel or a rabbit or a lizard. And about the time that it did, you might hear a squirrel or a rabbit or a lizard scurrying around in the brush. And the sun would continue to move around the sky and it would continue to shine on other things. And so the light was starting to fade. And just as it did, one last ray of light would shine in from the west and it would land on a picture of a tall, spooky cat who was starting to prowl the night. So to me, that was a really magical room and I used that room as the inspiration for the bird room. I had lots of questions uh, about the title. Samori M and Ontario M, both from Oak Hill Elementary as, and Isabella C from Southern Elementary wanted to know how I came up with the title. Well, it, you've heard me talk about brainstorming, so I did a ton of brainstorming and I brainstormed over a hundred different potential titles. Um, my editor at Random House wanted me to come up with something that was kind of Southern and also something that created a little bit of a question. So we did all sorts of variations of smack dab, which sounds kind of Southern, um, and then in the middle of maybe, which kind of creates a little bit of a question that um, I hope makes you want to read the book to find out um, the answer to it. So we went down the list and, uh, and we picked the best one, and I'm really glad we did because I really love the title now. But the story actually started out with the name of the main character, Cricket. And, um, and if you'd asked me at the beginning what was gonna be the title, I would have said Cricket, because um, I loved that name for so many years. But um, sometimes you need to listen to other people, and I'm really glad I did, because now I love my new title. So Caden P. of Southern Elementary wondered, what is the meaning of smack dab in the middle of maybe? And that's another great question. So um, smack dab in the middle is, um, you know, of course you're in the middle of several different things and then in the middle of maybe. Sort of describes where Cricket finds herself sometimes because she's trying to make up her mind about how to solve the clue trail. There's a lot of maybes in the clue trail and then trying to find her mother and whether her mother is gonna come back. There's a lot of maybes there. So there's a whole style, a, bi a whole big pack of maybes in the story and I drew upon that in writing the book. So Brianna, P uh, Brianna from Blueford Peeler Elementary, uh, Garon C from Monticello Brown Summit and Isabel K from Southern Elementary wanted to know how long I've been writing and how long I've been an author. So I've been writing since I was about your age, and I hope if you're not writing yet, that you will give it a try. Um, because as I've talked about, it is so much fun. Um, Jonathan H. from Monticello Brown Summit, Kennedy S. from Simpkins Elementary, Cannon S. from Simpkins Elementary, Bailey P. from Southern Elementary, Isabella C. from Southern Elementary, and Lindsay from Southwest Elementary all wanted to know how long did it take me to write the book. And I'm gonna tell you, but I'm gonna ask your teachers to hold you to the promise that it's not gonna scare you. Is that a deal? So it took me 10 years, but during that time, I was doing a lot of learning about writing and I didn't know some of the author's tricks that I'm sharing with you today. So I'm sure that when you're ready to write your book, you are gonna be so much quicker than I was. Um, so uh, Bella P from Alamance Elementary and Elias C from Oak Hill Elementary wanted to know how long it took from the first idea of the book 
to the final printing. So it took about 10 years um, all together, but from the time that my editor uh, bought the book at Random House until the time that the book uh, came out um, was two years. And that was um, a busy time of putting the book together, making changes, and also finding an artist to create the cover and the back and some of the inside drawings that you get to see. So um, Bailey P. of Southern Elementary, Elias C. of Oak Hill Elementary, uh, Bailey P., Janicia C., and Isabella C., all from Southern Elementary, wanted to know if I've written any other books and how many have I written. Well, I have written lots of drafts of other different things, but Smack Dab is my first published book. But I'm excited uh, to answer the next question for you. So Kylie S. from Jones Elementary and Heisu E. of Southern Elementary wanted to know, will you make another book and when? And the answer is, um, I'm only showing this to you guys. So this is actually a draft of the next project that I'm working on. Um, it is set in North Carolina and South Carolina, and it involves two cousins from feuding sides of the family. And they've got to have to solve a clue trail, get along together, survive in the woods, and not kill each other. So it's been a lot of fun to write. And I love, as I talked about writing clue trails, so that's why I'm always on the lookout for those weird, odd, and interesting facts. Um, and then Clifton R. of Simpkins Elementary wanted to know if Smack Dab was part of a series. It is not part of a series, but you never know. I've had a lot of questions from readers asking what happens next to Cricket. So stay tuned. I might just decide to uh, continue her adventures in another book. So some of you had questions about me and, uh, and my life. So Jesse L. from Oak Hill Elementary wanted to know if I live in the U.S. And I'm happy to say, yes, I do. Isabella C. of Southern Elementary asked where I live in, uh, in the world. And I live in South Carolina in Greenville, about three hours away from where you live. Um, Aileen from Blueford Peeler Elementary wants to know where I'm from. And uh, the ghost town that I told you all about, it is smack dab in the middle of Mississippi. So you might hear a little bit of my uh, Southern accent as I tell you uh, a little bit more about the book. Um, Isabella C. of Southern Elementary also wanted to know how old I am. So I'm old enough to have had lots and lots of outdoor adventures and I'm young enough to still have lots and lots of fun out exploring the woods. Um, and to make the book realistic for you all, I spent years studying outdoor survival. So the main character, Cricket, lives on her own in the treehouse in this overgrown ghost town. So I needed to learn how to live in a treehouse in an overgrown ghost town. So I took years of outdoor training and I learned five different ways how to, of how to start a fire. And you can read about one of them in the book. It's called Fire Out of Water. And the minute I heard that, I said, I've got to figure that out because it's just such a cool title and I'd love to tell readers about it. I learned how to make water safe to drink, how to find water in the woods, how to find food in the woods, what plants you'd better stay away from because they could flat out kill you, and even some plants that you could use for medicine. And to make it realistic, I actually camped out in a treehouse in my backyard. And here is a picture of the treehouse. So all I'm gonna tell you about the treehouse is my woods have bears, my woods have bobcats, and my woods have coyotes that like to howl in the middle of the night. And so the kind of sleep that you get when you're camping out in your treehouse, taking notes for readers, is a very different kind of sleep than the kind of sleep that you get when you're nice, uh, tucked in your warm and cozy bed inside. But I had to do it because I needed to make it realistic for y'all. So when I was spending time in the treehouse, I used another writer's trick, and that's I used all five of my senses, and I took notes. So I, I made notes of what I saw, what I heard, what I smelled, what I tasted, and what I touched. And I tried to put those details in the story for y'all. So um, Isabella C. of Southern Elementary wanted to know what my full name is, and it is Joe Watson Hackle. Jesse L. of Oak Hill Elementary wanted to know about my family. I'm married and I have three children who are, uh, and we're all sheltering in place together. And I hope that you all are nicely uh, tucked in, sheltering in place. 